Once the specimen chamber has vented, it may be opened by pulling gently on the handle until it stops. Do not use force or sudden jerky movements. Notice the large black o-ring vacuum seal and keep it free of dust and hairs. Samples can be mounted on the stage in the centre of the shiny circular rotation axis. As well as rotation, the stage can move in all directions and also tilt, while the centre screw can be screwed in and out to change the sample height. The interior of the sample chamber must be kept clean at all times. This is why the equipment is held under vacuum even when not in use. Gloves are worn to prevent the transfer of skin oils and greases to the inside surfaces. To make adjustments to the specimen mounting height, first grip the rotation axis with one hand and undo the lock nut of the specimen holder with the other. The lock nut may then be moved freely up and down on the screwed rod and the screwed rod screwed in and out to change the sample height. Once the required height for the sample has been reached, the lock nut may be wound down and gently locked into position, again holding the rotation axis to, to prevent damage to its gearing. The stage may also be moved under computer control. Here the specimen is being lowered, which is to say that the z-axis is going to its lowest position. This also means that the working distance, which is the distance the electron beam has to travel to reach the specimen, is becoming greater. The stage does a small rotation and then starts to move simultaneously in X and in Y. Let's watch it rotate and then move quickly back to the stage center position. Earlier you may have noticed a small set screw in the top of the sample holder which may be tightened gently to hold the sample firm. Here is a demonstration of the stage being tilted. It can tilt 10 degrees in one direction and nearly 80 degrees in the opposite direction. With the specimen chamber door open, we can examine some of the components inside. From the left, the circular grey orientation imaging camera screen. Top centre is the secondary electron detector. Over to the right is the final lens with the brass backscattered electron detector. Here is another view looking over the top of the specimen chamber. The brass backscattered electron detector and the secondary electron detector. Here is a more general view from the front of the instrument. You can just see the final lens above the door. I'm now going to insert a sample and grip the sample pin with the set screw. It only has to be tight enough to prevent it from wobbling. Now an important step which must not be forgotten. We must make sure that the sample is low enough to miss the backscatter detector when we close the specimen chamber door. For this we use a height gauge which has 10 mm working distance inscribed on it and the sample must always be below this mark. Failure to check the height of the sample could result in damage to the backscatter detector running to many thousands of dollars. Watch the specimen pass under the backscatter detector as the specimen door is closed. It is also a good idea 
to use the television camera inside the specimen chamber to make sure that there are no obstructions when you close the door. With the specimen chamber door closed, hold it firmly with your right hand while you use your left hand on the mouse to click on pump. Here's a closer look at the pump button. Soon you'll be ready to take pictures of your specimen.